Welcome back, ladies and gents, and welcome if you guys are new. My name is Matt. Welcome to Matty Outdoors. Here we talk a ton of hiking and backpacking stuff, and today is no different. We are going to talk some game-changing backpacking gear for myself. When I say that this is game-changing gear, a lot of this gear has really changed the backpacking game for myself. It has added a ton of comfort and simplicity to my backpacking gear loadout. It has made me far more functional when I'm out on trail. So without further ado, let's talk about some gear. And we are gonna start out with a straight up piece of luxury gear that I carry in my kit. This definitely adds weight to my backpacking gear loadout. Uh, not 100% sure on the weight. I honestly didn't weigh any of this gear before I started the video, but I will pop weights up on the screen for you guys. So I will weigh these after the video is shot. But uh, what I have here in my hand is the hang time hook. Now, obviously I am a huge fan of this piece of gear. I have three of them in my hands. I actually have four of these. I have been a fan of the hang time hook since they first came out. This red one here, and I also have a blue one. These are the originals. These were like the prototype ones. They're actually built on a 3D printer. So I don't know if you can see there, but there's some rough edges. These two newer ones are the new production model ones that they are putting out from Ridgeline Media Systems. I've got a nice new orange one here, and this guy here, super cool it's actually glow in the dark and what this little contraption does here is there is a hole through the end here and a couple little slits so this you will hook onto the ridge line of your hammock and have it facing towards you and you open up this little clasp here and you put your phone in there now obviously i can't show how this actually works because i film all my youtube videos on my cell phone i love watching movies when i'm out on trail or even reading a book now I will put books and movies onto my cell phone and then I will hang this from the ridge line of my hammock and clip my phone in there and I will kick back and relax and watch my you know movies or read my book or whatever. Now when I said that this can also work for tent campers, almost every tent out there is going to have some little loops and you know for like a gear loft or whatever up top to hang above you. I've got a couple friends who tent camp and they use these as well and you just put a piece of string you know a piece of paracord or some zingit or whatever just run a piece of cordage across through your tent and you can hang one of these from there you can hang a whole bunch of other stuff in there you don't have to hang your phone i mean i've seen people hang their headlamps from there and you know you can have a hanging light or whatever um, there's this little tab here i do believe they make like a water bottle attachment for it as well that hooks into this little tab here and you've got little you know tabs you can wrap your headphones up and stuff that's what i do when i go to sleep i just kind of wrap my headphones around there and then they're dangling and not wrapping around my neck and choking me. Diving into number two, we're going to step away from hammocks a little bit here, but I promise you guys we will jump back into some more hammock gear as the video continues. But the second piece of game-changing gear for myself has simply been a trekking pole. Now for the longest time I was a pretty traditional backpacker in the sense that I carried a fairly heavy backpack with you know like a 25 to 30 pound base weight I, I carried some pretty heavy gear back in the day and i also used a hiking stick now i was never really a trekking pole person up until my hiking stick broke a couple years ago and i decided to you know bite the bullet and buy myself a nice set of trekking poles and i bought a set of black diamond trekking poles i lent my set of black diamond trekking poles out to a former friend and uh, when the friendship ended for various reasons I did not get my black diamond trekking poles back now I am a huge proponent of budget backpacking gear that is functional and that works if you guys have been fans of the channel for a bit you've probably seen a lot of budget backpacking gear videos and I decided to start out on this quest to find myself a quality set of budget trekking poles. Over the last couple of years, I have tried five or six different brands of trekking poles. And my absolute personal favorite trekking poles in the budget category that I have used are these Trekology Trek Z 2.0 trekking poles. They're, you know, I don't know what you call these like foldable trekking poles here, but you just slide it down, locks into place, and then you have one adjustment point instead of most trekking poles where you'll have like another adjustment point down at the bottom and i like the flip lock style locking mechanism on trekking poles i just i find it's a lot more sturdy than the little twist lock ones i've, I've had a couple of the twist lock style and it always seems to fail and always seems to give out when you least want it to which is usually when you're crossing a river this is actually the first set of trekking poles i've ever used that had cork handles and i am i am sold on them they are awesome i, I find my hands don't really sweat i haven't really had any kind of blisters or hot spots anywhere with these trekking poles i've been using these for the last year now um, I found with some foam handle trekking poles, I, I would get a little blister kind of right here in the crook of my hand. But uh, yeah, no issues with these whatsoever. These have held up awesome. I've got a couple hundred kilometers on these so far. 
Uh, the tip is still in really good shape. Um, I only ever use one trekking pole and this is the trekking pole that I have been using. As you can tell, it is dirty and beat up and it's, you know, got dog hair on it because I have two dogs and everything in your house gets covered in dog hair when you got dogs. Now, when you are out hiking on trail, one of the biggest comfort concerns that a lot of people have tends to be their feet. Now, I've talked a lot in the past about blister maintenance and being proactive with your feet. And for myself, that was the case for years and years. I was taping up my feet at the start of every single backpacking trip because I am one of those people that suffers from blisters. Until I made the switch to a sock that I honestly was guilty of laughing at people that wore these socks for the longest time and I have been rocking them for the last couple years now and honestly can say that I have yet to have a single blister since making the switch to the uber ridiculous in gingy toe socks. Now I guarantee somebody's gonna laugh at me for rocking the toe socks out on trail but uh, they have been absolutely game changing for me and my foot comfort and my blister issues out on trail. Where I used to get blisters is uh, in between my toes and just having that little bit of fabric separation has just been awesome to me. And before going to the Njinji toe socks, I was a big lover of the darn tough socks. There are so many advantages to the Njinji socks over the darn tough socks that uh, honestly, I, I don't ever see myself going back. Even if darn tough came out with a toe sock, what I found with the darn toughs and most merino wool socks is they tend to take a lot longer to dry out than a straight synthetic sock. Now, the Njinjis don't have that lifetime warranty that the Darn Tough socks have, which tends to be the selling point for a lot of people. And for the last two and a half years, I've been rocking the Njinjis and have not had a single hole or a single blowout in any of my socks. I've got probably six to 700 kilometers on my Njinji socks. And I don't know if it's just pure luck or just something I'm doing differently than other people, but I have had no issues with my socks wearing out. They are, I would say, almost as in good of shape as when I first bought them. I know through hikers tend to say that the Njinji socks don't last nearly as long as the Darn Tufts on the through hikes, but uh, myself, I'm a weekend warrior and the Njinjis have been working perfect for me. I've had zero blisters since making the switch to the awesome toe socks. And the only time that my Luco tape ever comes out of my first aid kit is when I am hooking somebody else up with it out on trail. And it tends to happen on almost every backpacking trip that I go on and I get made fun of for the toe socks, but hey, it's been saving my feet. So if you are someone who deals with some blister issues, you know, maybe just swallow the pride a little bit, try out the toe socks. Uh, they're, they're a little finicky to put on. Um, there's no way around it. You know, you, you do kind of got to force your toes in each little slot, but uh, it is 100% worth it. I, I am absolutely in love with these socks and I will be sticking with these socks for the indefinite future. I, I, I can't see any sock coming out that's gonna top these. These are freaking awesome. I promised you guys before we were gonna jump right back into some hammock gear and that's what we're doing right now. Uh, this one here is kind of a little bit of a two for one for you guys. It is my tarp management system for my hammock. Now, the very first time I went to set up my tarp when I got into hammock camping, I just had two pieces of cordage off the end of the tarp and that's a pretty common way to hang your tarp. You just, you know, tie one piece around one tree and one piece around the other and you tension up your tarp that way. And I honestly absolutely hated it. It was kind of a pain in the ass to be able to center my tarp over top of my hammock. And I figured there had to be a better way. And I did some looking online and I found the continuous ridge line from Dutchware gear, as well as a one piece snake skin from Dutchware gear. And what the Dutchware continuous ridge line is, is a like 35 or 40 foot piece of cordage that has this little titanium hook spliced onto one end. So you put this guy around the tree and you just, you know, clip it to the cord and that holds the one end. And then on the other end, it has got probably one of the coolest pieces of gear when it comes to hammocks, the Dutchware Wasp. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit gimmicky. And you know, I know a lot of people don't like hardware on their hammocks, but uh, I am a lover of hardware. I am a huge lover of Dutchware gear and all the cool little trinkets that Dutch puts out. But this little guy here called the Wasp because because it looks like a wasp. This is what tensions the ridge line when I put up my tarp. The advantage to me of a continuous ridge line is this orange cordage here is one solid piece. This goes up and hooked up to that with Prussics are these two 
little gray soft shackles. And these little gray loops here, this is what your tarp hooks up onto on either end. And it makes it so easy to center your tarp over your hammock. You just string the ridge line up and you just slide your tarp wherever you want on those prussics. This setup here, this is how my tarp gets stored in my backpack all the time. Um, I just take the you know long running end of my continuous ridge line and it wraps my tarp up and my tarp is inside of a mesh snakeskin. Now what a snakeskin is, is basically it's a long tube. Uh, this one here is 12 feet long to go with my 12 foot winter tarp from UGQ. When it comes to packing up your tarp, having a snakeskin makes it so easy to keep your tarp managed and keep all the cords and stuff contained. I mean, all of my guy lines and all the stuff for the tarp are all in here. Grab your snake skin from the one end of the tarp and pull it all the way down along. And it's got your tarp all nicely contained up above your hammock. I just like it for the convenience factor and just makes it a lot easier to pack it up and throw it in my backpack. So uh, yeah, if you guys are newer into hammock camping and that kind of thing, and you're looking for a tarp management system, take a look at uh, getting yourself a one piece snake skin and a, a you know continuous ridge line setup. It has been awesome for me. It has made deployment and put away of my tarp so freaking easy and helps keep it nice, neat and orderly and you wanna stuff it away in your backpack. The next piece of game-changing gear that we're gonna talk about is probably the most game-changing piece of gear that we're gonna talk about in this video, and that has been a backpack for my dogs. This pack in particular, this is the Canine Pack from Mountain Smith. This is the backpack that Wanda currently uses. Uh, we've used a couple different backpacks over the last couple years. We used a Roughwear backpack as well as the Mountain Smith pack. And I've got video reviews on each of those packs and I will put those in the description box for you guys if you wanna check those out. Without sort of, you know, like trying to push one brand over the other, uh, I will just say that adding a dog pack pack to my gear loadout has been huge. Obviously, if you guys have watched the channel for a bit, you guys have seen Wanda in almost all of my trip videos or my boy Remy. You guys know I absolutely freaking love hiking with my dogs and just you know, having the ability for them to carry their own gear and come on backpacking trips with me has been huge. I was that guy for years and years that just kind of hiked solo or you know, hiked with a buddy. And uh, when I got my dogs and got them into backpacking, it just absolutely changed backpacking for me. I honestly have a hard time finding the words to just describe what it does for me because I, I tend to get pretty emotional about it. It's, uh, it's a pretty awesome connection that I have with my girl Wanda and uh, you know, just being able to go out and explore and see the things that we see together and, you know, go on the adventures that we go on is uh, is pretty awesome. It's a very, very special relationship that her and I have together. And, uh, you know, her little backpack is a huge part of that. So if any of you guys and gals are looking at hiking with your dog or have been curious about it and you're not sure what kind of gear to use and, you know, you find it a little bit intimidating, I've got a couple different gear load of videos for all of the gear that Wanda carries on our backpacking trips and all the gear that I carry for her as well on our backpacking trips. And I'll pop those two videos right here for you guys so when you're done with this video check out either one of those i'll see you guys over there and as always i'm maddie thank you so dang much for watching and i'll see you on the next one